Welcome to BK Academy of Chess. Our objective is to learn how to play the open like Bobby Fischer, and in this first lesson we take a look at how Bobby plays against the con variation of the Sicilian defense. Bobby's main weapon for playing with the white pieces was with the straightforward e4 move. After c5, with knight c3, Bobby defeated Spassky in game 17 and 19 in their $5 million match in 1992. However, throughout his career, he played knight f3. From this position, black has many options so let's first take a look at e6, the Sicilian defense, French variation, Bobby's usual continuation was d4, one thing you'll notice about Bobby, he stuck to the main lines and knew them well. However, from time to time, Bobby would transfer into the King's Indian attack with the moves g3, d3, bishop g2, knight b, d2, and castle, but not necessarily in that order. The main line continues with the open French variation c takes d4, knight takes d4, and after a6, we have the Sicilian defense, con variation. Here, the young Bobby played the Maro bind setup with c4, but later in his career he scored better by continuing with bishop d3. Modern variation, our first position I would like to analyze to see how Bobby plays. Here, the four most popular options for black are, knight f6, bishop c5, queen c7, and knight c6. Here are black knight's notes from analyzing Bobby's games to try to find how he handles this position. Though Black Knight ranks within the top 10% of chess players, he is by far, no master. Now let's continue, I noted that 1. Bobby would like to first castle, 2. Then fight for control of d5, 3. Before castling, Bobby will exchange knights if Black plays knight c6, 4. Likes to place his dark squared bishop on e3. Now these are general ideas but there are exceptions for example when black plays queen c7. Okay, now let's take a look at black's most popular response, knight f6, as played by Miguel Nydorf in the third round of the Siegenol final in 1970. A pause will follow each move to try to guess Bobby's next move. So here's the pause. It's not a long pause so if you need more time, it's up to you to press pause. The game continued with castle, d6, c4, bishop d7, knight c3, knight c6, bishop e3, bishop e7. First Bobby castled, then played to control d5, using the Marochi bind set up with c4, followed by knight c3. And noticed after Bobby castled, he did not exchange knights on c6, but instead protected his knight with bishop e3. Now let's examine queen c7. After Bobby castle, all of my notes on how Bobby plays against the con variation are null and void. After all, queen c7 significantly changes black's defense. His queen is developed on a nice diagonal covering the dark squares of the center while aiming directly at white's castle, as well as taking a direct shot down the half-open c-file. So the focus seems to have shifted from the d5 square to e5. And now after knight c6, instead of playing bishop e3, Bobby played the main line move, exchanging with knight takes c6, b takes c6, and continued with knight d2, knight f6, b3, bishop c5, bishop b2, e5, king h1, d6, e4, and as you can see, it's all about the e5 square. Now let's turn our attention to bishop c5, Polugovsky variation. Note, I don't have information on how Bobby plays against this move but I would suppose he would play the main line knight b3, looking to exchange off his knight for the bishop, and after black moves his bishop with say bishop a7, I think he would seriously consider castle, knight c6, c4, d6, knight c3, however, after 9. Knight g, e7, I'm sure Bobby would not play bishop e3, allowing black to exchange off his weak bishop for Bobby's strong bishop. Instead, I think Bobby would play something like king h1, followed by knight d5, but that's just my opinion, though it is book theory and gives white good chances. 
Returning back to the original position, let's see how Bobby plays against Knight C6, as played by Tigran Vartanovich Petrosian in Buenos Aires 1971. So what do you think? Knight takes C6, B takes C6, Castle, D5, E takes D5, C takes D5, C4, Knight F6, C takes D5, E takes D5, Knight C3, Bishop E7, now let's compare with my notes. But for castling Bobby exchanged knights on c6, then he castled, following up by fighting for control of the d5 square. And though black occupies the square with a pawn, it's a weak isolated pawn. Now before playing bishop e3, Bobby plays queen a4, because when fighting against an isolated pawn, it is positionally advantageous to exchange majors, that is rooks and queen, and keep the minors, knights and bishops. After queen d7, before exchanging queens, Bobby plays rook e1 to delay black's castling by attacking the bishop, following the old chess adage, always delay your opponent's castling if possible. And after, queen takes a4, knight takes a4, bishop e6. Now Bobby plays bishop e3. After 10, c takes d5, let's take a look at knight takes d5 as played by Matthew Green in New York 1963. Now witness how Bobby continues his plan while taking the advantage on opportunities before they disappear, such as with in-between moves and with threats on hanging pieces. So what do you think? We will pause after each move to try to predict Bobby's next move. Now moving a piece twice goes against opening principles but Bobby finds a nice way to continue his fight for d5, while threatening to take black's hanging rook on a1, with bishop e4, and after bishop d6. Bobby continues his assault on d5, while developing with knight c3, by the way, we will continue this line until Bobby plays bishop e3, so after knight takes c3, Bobby continues with a nice and between move bishop c6, and after king e7, he now recaptures the knight with b takes c3, and after rook b8, develops with a threat on the hanging pawn with queen g4, after rook g8, threatens another hanging pawn with queen h4 check, after f6, takes the pawn with queen takes h7, after bishop b7, exchanges with bishop takes b7, which is a good thing to consider when ahead in material, plus bobby is not allowing black to regroup, and after black recaptures, his rook will be hanging. Continuing with rook takes b7, adds tactical mortar by placing his rook on the same file as black's king with rook e1 after queen c8 h3 so why do you think bobby played h3 it looks like a prophylactic move to guard against attacks on the h file and along the back rank after king f7 gains a tempo with check to relocate his queen to its next post with queen h5, and after g6, adds tactile mortar by placing his queen on the same file as black's king, while tying down black's queen to protecting its rook, with queen f3, and after rook b5, I promise, bishop e3, will be played, but first bobby continues his assault by attacking black's rook, with a4, and after rook f5, relocates his queen by setting up a strong battery ram on the e-file, with queen e2, bishop c5, and finally, bishop e3, concluding our first lesson, in learning to play the modern can variation of the Sicilian defense like Bobby Fischer. Thanks for tuning into BK Academy of Chess, where together we build,
and over the board we even the score.